Good morning. It's October 30th, 2017, around 9.30 a.m. Uh, and why are you asking am I starting off with a picture of Patrick Nowakowski, the president of the Long Island Railroad? Well, because uh, what you need to look at is the story below uh, that is was covered by NBC. Uh, apparently, um, the service on the Ronkonkoma branch was suspended last night, and the railroad never provided shuttle buses for people and left people stranded at Farmingdale and guess who was there to rip them off the taxis so uh, you have to wonder maybe uh, the taxis are also paying off Patrick Nowakowski but then again we gotta follow it to the next guy Patrick Nowakowski was put in there by guess who yeah he was put in here by this schmuck Andrew Cuomo our governor who doesn't care about us he hates us especially us Long Islanders so let's show you, I want to show you the Long Island Railroad's Twitter and the fact we still have a lot of power outages and the, and the wind and rain reports that we have right now. So this started uh, in the early morning hours. Uh, there was a down power lines on the tracks near Pine Lawn. Uh, however, from what I see, these were uh, actually Long Island Railroad power lines for the signals as there were no local PSCG outages in that area. Um, no, no major ones anyway. Uh, and they set multiple power lines on the tracks, but you'll notice here that eastbound trains terminate Farmingdale. Bus service is not available. Bus service is not available. They just say customers are encouraged to use alternate branches. Uh, but what if you don't have a car? Well, then you're screwed, right? Uh, and you're just stranded or left at the mercy of a taxi. Uh, and even if you do have a car, if you want to park at these others, especially on the Babylon branch, they're only for residents only, and they don't lift those restrictions when there's a shutdown. This is exactly why I think the railroad, all the parking lots should be owned by the MTA. No more. We need to do away with residential restrictions completely. It should be illegal, and they should be open for all customers. All right? Uh, the snobs, especially the snobs on the Babylon branch, oh, they'll, they'll, they won't have any of that. So as you can see here, right here, according to their Twitter, there is no alternate service for people east of Farmingdale. So, pretty much they were saying, take a taxi, take a taxi, take a taxi, spend, spend extra money on a taxi, uh, you know, and I think the railroad should refund the money that people laid out for, that's what I'm calling on right now for you at the folks at the MTA, refund these people some of the money they spent on the taxis that ripped them off because you couldn't get bus service there. It's bad enough they're putting cheese buses when there's planned work. But now, they, uh, uh, they won't even provide buses when the service shuts down. This violates their own Long Island Railroad pledge. All right, so they did eventually restore the service, but it was down for about six hours, five, six hours. So, you know, I, if, I, if it was me, I would just have to wait because I don't have money for a taxi. I can't afford a taxi. And even if I did, I wouldn't give them my money. They are crooks. They are fucking crooks. So I want to show you the Long Island Railroad pledge that seems to have gone out the window since our dear friend Patrick Nowakowski became the Long Island Railroad president. So this is according to the MTA's own webpage. All right? And we're going to go here and we're going to look at when service is disrupted. We're going to look, look right here, all right? All right, so when service is disrupted, the MTA will provide customers and turning alternate routes and trains, which will make every effort all right, they used to be able, they actually changed this pledge. Uh, they, they used to say we would make every effort to provide alternative transportation. So that is now gone. That is now gone. They used to be able to do that. Now they're just going to provide customers with information concerning alternate routes. All right, so... It seems that they have changed their pledge. Uh, I don't have the old one. This is the current one. But I could tell you that they used to be able to offer to provide alternate service for people who are stranded. Now, that's not their thing because this is Governor Andrew Cuomo who thinks he, he thinks he's doing such a freaking great job. But this guy is one of the worst governors to ever run this state and we cannot return him to office. Here we go, folks. Here's the picture. Our two buddies, Governor Andrew Cuomo and Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano. All right, so 
And they're both involved with these taxi companies. And so they are getting paid off so you don't so the, the every time the service goes down, people take taxis. All right? And Mangano has been indicted here. Uh, and Andrew Cuomo needs to be next. And I'm expecting an indictment on Andrew Cuomo when the trial of Ed Mangano starts. Uh, because they've been in on this whole thing together with NICE. They've been destroying the transportation network on Long Island for a while now. They have it in for Long Island, especially Mr. Cuomo. All right? And uh, Cuomo needs to be next. All right? Here's the picture of the two of them together. All right? These are two freaking criminals right here. All right? So that's been my little rant on that. Let me get to uh, the power outage situation and the storm next. And unfortunately, the power outage situation is not great. Uh, we have a lot more. Uh, the outage is still up there because the wind is still up there. Uh, the wind has picked back up again from the west and is now gusting up to close to 50 miles an hour. Uh, and we'll look at those wind numbers in a minute. Um, but these are the amount of outages we have. We still have lots of outages. I am not going to go over all of them. Most of them are on the north shore. See all the big outages are up here. Uh, and you know, there's some on the south shore. So they're all over the place. It's going to be a stormy day. There's probably going to be a number of places that will be closed today. Uh, I don't know about schools, but I imagine some schools will be closed as well. Um, there are a lot of power outages due to this wind that is continuing. And the wind warning continues, I believe, till noon today. So we are still under this wind warning, uh, high wind warning, uh, for these very strong winds uh, as this intense storm starts pulling away from us, but at least we should start to see the sun by the afternoon. So let's take a look at the weather, uh, the local weather here, and uh, I'll wrap this hopefully final update on this storm up, uh, though I will be out later, and if there's any storm damage, I'll show it to you. So I just want to show you some of the current conditions outside. Um, you can see we have the west wind at 16 gusting to 37 at Farmingdale, so the wind is still up there, and look at the temperature, it's really dropped quite a bit. Since yesterday, we're now 47 degrees, um, and it's getting cold out there. So that's Farmingdale Airport. Let me show you some other observations. So here's Islip, um, west wind 20 gusting to 31. And we got more rain last night, too. could be another inch on top of the rainfall totals, but I don't have updates on those. Look at Gabreski Airport. Again, the winds are gusting quite a bit. 50. Let's look at Ocean County. Oh, the wind's quieted down there now, west at only 14 miles an hour. All right, so that's what we have to look for later today. All right, that wraps up this update. Uh, hope you're all safe. Hope you have power. And uh, uh, this this crazy weather continues. This is the, the, new, the new climate we're in. This is what we're going to have to deal with. And, uh, it sucks.